game's like one of those Russian nesting dolls. You think you have a good idea what's going on, and then out of nowhere, it opens up. You're like, wow, what an unexpected treat. It's yet another wooden doll. Seems I've been bamboozled. And then that one opens up, and you're like, all right, knock it off. That's kind of what happened as I was playing Crossfire for the Sega Genesis. That game is just full of delightful surprises. I want to pack them all back together and take them apart again. Released in 1991, Crossfire was actually known as Super Airwolf Overseas. That's a much cooler name than Crossfire, which, which always makes me think of dumb pundits with ugly ideas and ugly bow ties. Nonetheless, regardless of the name, this is a perfectly solid hybrid shooter with some interesting ideas. So, you know, you start playing Crossfire and you think, oh, okay, it's it's like Xevious. And, you know, you prepare yourself for this, this vintage 1941-inspired vertical 16-bit shooter. And then the plane swoops low. And then your guy leaves the cockpit. And then at the top of your lungs, you're like, no, this never works. Get back in the plane, you pixelated poop head. Haven't you played Star Fox Assault? Unfortunately, running around on foot sucks a lot less in Crossfire. In fact, the three different styles tie together pretty well. Most levels start with a stretch of that, you know, vintage, vertically scrolling gameplay any arcade fiend is familiar with, only afterward you're swooping in close. These guys don't have a chance. Now, this is the shortest of the gameplay varieties, and in fact, it's really more of a segue for what's to come. Because after that, you're on foot, and moving through the same stage, your plane just bombed. So the more enemies you're able to destroy with your plane, the easier it'll be for your foot soldier. So, Crossfire is certainly a diverse game, and it actually has a few nice features as well. The order of the missions is entirely up to you, and after completing one, you can use the money you earn to unlock new weapons. So there's a sense of freedom in Crossfire, uh, not to mention diversity, that kind of sets it apart from other 16-bit shooters. Now, the game isn't perfect. I mean, aiming while walking can be a headache, for starters, but for all the new things it tried, Crossfire is definitely worth a look. It's a decent shooter with some really unique ideas and some, some really bad English.